All right, boys, I just drove three hours in the pouring down rain uh, to get my boat. I'm here. Boat rigged, I haven't seen it yet. I had some sneak peeks they've been sending me. Uh, and this is the worst time to possibly get it, but I'm going to fish the Sealy at Rayburn week after next. And literally, I've got a, uh, as many of you guys know, I sit on the Texas Freshwater Fisheries Advisory Committee. I was uh, fortunate enough to be appointed to that uh, committee a couple of years ago, or last year with uh, Texas Park and Wildlife. Got a meeting with them Monday. I've got Tuesday, Wednesday, we've got stuff going on and got to be at Rayburn Thursday. So for me to get the boat, this was it. This was the only day I could do it. I'm hoping to fish in it tomorrow if it's not lightning and blowing like crazy, but I want to bring you guys along and uh, go in and check out and see what they've done for us. So let's rock in and see what's happening in the pouring down rain. It really is raining. I mean, it, it, it's raining. It has been pouring. I think I see it. Taylor's looking at fishing porn. Uh oh, that's head down. I was taking orders. Look at there. Hey guys, we're just talking about me screwing stuff up with camera and I got in here and got excited and didn't video anything. So we've got the whole team here. Uh, Taylor, Yoder, and uh, Ashley. And we're going to let us let them walk me through what we've done. So by the way, this boat, kind of like we did the last boat, we, we swapped stuff on and off of it. Because we got some stuff coming, we're gonna swap off this boat, right? Yes, yes, we're playing around with some stuff. Uh, this is to get him by for a month and a half until we get some really cool stuff on the front and back. So new stuff coming, but let's walk through. You wanna start with the grass or do you start with the troll motor? Start up front, start Come. with them, Taylor. All right, so 2024 rig. Right now, what we got going on, we got finally got Ken on a real trolling motor. We got him on a Garmin oh, trolling motor wow. this year. So, Garmin trolling motor, we've got... And, and we did, what shaft length did we do? We did the 50. Okay. So... And it measures differently than other ones, yeah, right? Yeah, so if you look up at the top around where that coil cable is, there's some unusable inches up there, so that's why it's actually like what a 45 Minn Kota would be. Okay. Um, but they call it a 50 because it is 50 inches long, they just have some unusable length up there. But, uh, got dual LVS 34 transducers here, we got one perspective. And then we got one down here for forward on the barrel of the trolling motor for clearance and everything like that. Um, we'll have something cool for that coming soon. Now what, what's the, what's the transducer in the bottom of that? So the bottom right now, what they come with is a GT 54. That is a UHD option. Um, this is just the smaller, the one that's been out for a while. That way it fit better on the trolling motor head here versus the 56 or 36 like we run on the back of boats now that has a little bit better picture but you know up here as long as you got some down scan and some 2d that's what most everybody's looking for up here because you got scope for everything else and you've got that that's the prop that chews weeds up good yeah so this one right here is actually going to be a better power prop um you've got multiple options as far as props go this is the stock uh, open water prop that comes with it then they have a weedless version also, and then you can also fit the uh, four inch Minn Kota prop on here as well if you're wanting something a little more beefy. You just lose a lot of power as far as how much Get up output and go. this motor's right. got. Okay. Because I did it, I, I was running a Minn Kota for a while, and when I popped my Minn Kota ear off of it, um, I swapped back to this one, and without changing the speed on the trolling motor, I was at about three quarter bars on it. This one jumps up and goes so much harder than well, that. I was impressed does. how fast yours was the other day. Yes. So, all right. So from there, then we went to the NBT 16s. Yep. We've got NBT 16s up here. Um, same thing as running, you know, a good Garmin setup up here. But man, NBT for the quality of the build and the strength and everything, picture quality, you're going to see a huge improvement on that this year. And then also what we got here, we got new stuff from Van at Bass Boat Technologies. This is the Puma STS and Caracal STS mount that he's been using now for about a year. But up here on the top for these gimbal brackets, Van got with us. We sent him a couple of units and he built these um, to you know have a heavier duty option to go away from the stock mount. So 
changed over to big teeth here, you know, big heavy duty knobs. And then you're actually using all three of the mounting locations. Holy smokes. So these things aren't gonna go anywhere. If you break Holy these off, smokes. you're breaking the boat off. The boat's coming, the nose of yep. the boat's coming off. Cap's coming off. So and, and, and Rick Pierce would be really thrilled. You even get a another we do uh, get another cup beverage holder, we're holder there for your basket. Right. Yeah, we're trying to take care of his vision of cup holders. So but man, these mounts here, if you're not familiar with them and you've got one of these cats. This is the only way to go. I know it has the dual step built into it to do graphs from the factory, but for these bigger graphs, you know, you've got to have something like this to get them up above everything. And I um, still got my step at the front. Yep, yeah, still got a step there. That's um, nice. But this mount actually, because of your access hole that's underneath the trolling motor foot pedal over there, you can get in underneath here and on each side of this mount, you have three bolts over here to a backer plate on the underside and then over here on the other side you have four bolts and then up here on this top step you have two bolts right oh, there yeah. okay i got you so it literally is going nowhere yes and with with thick backer plates you know just as thick as all this metal is here underneath it that's all threaded inserts under there you know drop a blue loctite in there you never have to worry about those backing out or anything like that man it's just the strongest mount option there is on the market for these it's second to none okay and quick detach if you're going to go fish up in the junk all day and you don't need graphs you know during the spring when we're spawn fishing around here you just got some thumb screws here with knobs on top of them just rip them off take your you know, unplug your graphs set them off the side in the shop and get, have a little bit of a platform here to stand on the bed fish you know things like that so that's cool uh, awesome deal there or, um, at the, or at the hotel yeah or at the hotel either way yeah. so literally i can unplug my units unscrew that but everything comes off comes off I in one piece or me. you know you can still pull them off here at your knobs you know like you would a standard unit That'd but be, with that deal there you know being able to take the whole thing inside it's quick yeah, and easy yeah no doubt so um oh and the garmin I, I was impressed when we fished together how easy the garmin lifts it's so much easier to lift out of the water yes, yeah for, you, you've got a dual strut on it you've got a strut right here on the front side of it or the underside and then you also have one around here on the back uh you know all stainless latching through everything here it's just built to last okay. you're not going to break off any you know random plastic on these all right so for a guy who's never run a garmin i got three buttons yeah so you have constant on yeah you got a constant button you got a your anchor button and then over there you have your course lock button and there is a way that i'll show you to lock that out because a lot of guys complain about that button sometimes you know bumping it with their foot when they're running the trolling motor mm -hmm. and uh i do have a way to lock that out besides the zip tie method that a lot of guys are familiar with <laughs> okay all right let's go to the dash okay to the dash so on the dash bbt again yep bbt here heavy duty gimbal brackets this is his mount that he uses for all the bass cats you know just a bolted through plate here with a shelf on it uh, you got anti-vibration around here in the back that keeps these units from you know moving back and forth a, a lot in rough water you got that right there that's up against that metal so mm -hmm. that yep. keeps your vibration down there i think that's real similar to the one we had in the links yes it should be okay. and then we've got you know the cable guard and everything on there so 8612 xsvs both sides one to one on control for the mbts full compatibility full picture you know the whole nine we're running the gt36 and 8 same transducer combo we've ran the last years um it's still man i i i get people to switch every day off a of hummingbird from them it's it's simpler to set up and they're not as variable on settings and just a great picture so it I, has a spectacular picture yeah and down the, imaging side imaging mm -hmm. everything it's got a spectacular picture the user interface on these garments you know it's what we've all kind of come to like about them you're able to just do everything easy you know we've got region export now for uh, waypoints was something they added it last year to where you don't have to you know zap your waypoints out after, after every lake like in a bulk file and then take, take them to somebody and have them separate them we can draw a box around a lake now zap you're, waypoints you're off you're gonna have to teach me how to do that yep. that's cool yep. okay so, and so we don't need a black box no no black box for this boat because we're one to one on the graphs so uh, if you were going to run, like, say, a single 16 here, Garmin, you know, then that could tie to one of the NBTs, and then you'd have to have the 8700 box and the rod locker to run mm -hmm. the second one. So, still full compatibility. It's just the price on the black box and the price on these units is the same. 
in my view, I take the extra inches over doing Absolutely. the Absolutely. over doing the black box. Okay. And then we we went with dun dun dun. So on the business end, got to have power. We went with two of the 36 volt, 40 amp hour impulses. And as Ken touched on in a video the other day when he and I went and fished at Lake of the Pines, that's the setup I run in my boat, along with on the 12 volt side, the uh, 120 impulse. Now on Ken's boat, what we did here is we added a AGM house battery. So all of his main stuff is still ran through that house battery. And so what we found is because of all these four stroke motors now, they have such high output alternators or stators in them. It's best to have that style of battery back here in parallel to one of these lithiums to absorb some extra overcharge that those BMS systems sometimes can't handle in uh, from that high output you know charge. So you're still getting the high output of a lithium for clarity in your graphs and things like that, but you have the stability of the AGM and the higher quote unquote reserve capacity, you know, for long days and you still got something to crank your big motor with, you know. Um, but like I say, same setup I run in my boat, it's just wired up a little bit different than his, you know, my boat's a little outdated compared to Ken's. It's got a few gremlins, so. Okay. Um, charging wise, back in the back, we've got a 1236 charger from Impulse. Um, that is all on board, single plug up. It's variable switched on the 12 volt side for AGM, lead acid, lithium, you know, whatever type of battery you run on your 12 volt side. So even if you say, man, I want to go to these 36 volt batteries and I don't want to, you know, go lithium on the 12 volt side yet, that charger is going to work for you. So it's able to charge that single 36 along with whatever kind of 12 volts you've got. And we've got two 36 volt trolling motor battery. Yeah. And so, so let me just say that out loud. I basically have the equivalent of six batteries that I had in the last boat. Basically, yes. Um, and man, I say I've been running them now for a couple of years in my boat, and it's, you think 40 amp hours, not a lot, but man, when you put two of them in there together to share that load, even on a long day, you've still got a lot of power left. If you had some kind of electrical issue at your place you're staying during a tournament or something, you're gonna make it a couple of days off those batteries. Oh, outstanding. Cool deal. So, that's the new ride Taylor and I are going to do, as we've talked before about, we're going to go out in the morning. They, they didn't, it's been pouring down rain. It's going to rain on us in the morning, but we're going to go out, make sure everything's working seamlessly. He's then going to come to work and I'm going to go, I hope, unless it's lightning, I'm going to go fish a little bit uh, somewhere that I've not been in years and years, but uh, I got something I want to try. So guys, it's a beautiful build. It's a pretty boat. Thank you for everything you guys do for us. Uh, and I'm looking forward to the new fun stuff we got coming. We got three new products. Uh, Jones and MBT Marine is launching in the next three to six months. Uh, Ken's gonna have all three on his boat. The first one he will have on his boat by the first week of May, possibly both of them. And by the middle of June, we might change the way fishermen rig boats. So guys, by the way, speaking of, if you want to see my rig, so I am going to fish uh, Sealy. Oops, sorry about the bad angle there. I'm going to be at Sealy uh, week after next. Uh, just reach out. I, I will make myself available. I'll tell you what, why don't we plan to do this? Why don't we plan to be around the way in Saturday so you guys can come and check out the NBT. Uh, I'll just make, I mean, look, it's a, it's a hard boat to miss, right? It's a beautiful, it's a little dusty right now, but a black and white Puma. You guys come find me. We'll check out the, cause we can actually be on the water after the weigh in. So come over and find me. I'll show you how the garments are set up, how the impulses are set up back here. And then, uh, show you what the live scope looks like on the duel up front. Cause we're going to do some brush pile fishing at, uh, at the, uh, Sealy. So come find me, uh, again, Saturday, I'll be around there. Uh, I'm also going to do a little bit of prop testing. I've got a couple of props we're going to test on the boat. So we'll be around and look forward to seeing you guys. And uh, thanks for tuning in. We're going to go eat some dinner here in Texas County now. Mm.